Lesson 11. There is no such thing as something for nothing. If you want to get something in return, you must be willing to give something. Whether that is positive energy, whether that is effort and going to work and working two jobs so that you can get a bunch of money, or if it's jumping into something totally new and learning a new craft so that you can make a crap ton more money. Right now I'm looking into going into waitressing. I know it's going to take a lot of training. I know it's going to take a lot of work, but it's going to make more money. So you have to be willing to put the effort in on the forefront so that on the back end of things, you can reap the rewards that you have some 12 in life you get what you ask for if you never ask your boss for a promotion at work you're never going to get a promotion likely unless like they're really desperate and they really need somebody to fill the gaps if you don't sell your services for what you think they're worth for what you know they're worth people will pay less if you put a lower price tag on them, people will pay the lower price tag. Nobody's going to insist that you raise your prices. You have to decide that you are valuable enough to do that for yourself. If you want something to change in your life, you have to be willing to ask God or the universe or whatever you believe in for that thing and take steps towards doing it. Because if you never ask, you'll never receive. If it's just a dream, it's not going to be realized. Totally paraphrasing this one, but it's like what Tony Robbins says. The things that you think about are dreams. The things that you talk about are plans. And the things that you actually go do and set out on are your goals. The things that you're going to get to in life. I might have butchered this quote. I really hope I didn't. But lesson 13 is when you want something, the whole universe conspires for you to get it. Paulo Coelho. This is a quote from The Alchemist, which is probably one of my favorite books of all time and it is an amazing fable you should read it it has all kinds of heavy metaphors about life and a whole bunch of messages that really stick with you and change your perspective on things but one of the main messages in the book is that once you start pursuing your personal legend as it's called in the book the whole universe will conspire to help you get that thing to help you realize what your heart wants and what that really means is that oh, doors will open up for you. And maybe doors were opening up before, but you just now decided to open your eyes enough to notice them. Once you decide you want something, once you decide, you have to decide that that's what you want, what you're going to get, what you're going to achieve, that is when you'll start to see these opportunities. You'll start to meet new people. You'll start to learn new things. And ultimately, you'll start to get closer and closer to that which you are meant to do in your life. 2014, shortcuts only exist in traffic. That was an... I was in traffic for an hour today. I really wish I would have known some shortcuts. <laughs> Look, if you leave work an hour early, you are going to get an hour pay cut from your paycheck. If you half-ass something and it falls apart or it doesn't turn out very well or your presentation sucks, you're going to screw yourself over. There are no shortcuts in life except for in traffic. You can't cut corners around things that are essential for accomplishing a goal, completing a project, and obtaining some success. However, lesson 15 is work smarter, not harder. If you wanna work a $10 an hour job doing something super, super easy, you go for it. You can spend less energy doing something like working at a sandwich shop. I've, I've worked at a sandwich shop before. Um, working at a gym, standing at the front desk, you're totally welcome to do it. But if you want to achieve more in life, if you want to progress further in life, if you want to make more money, you have to be willing to put the thought into what's going to actually get you there, not just... There are some people that go into a business like a sandwich shop and they bust their ass thinking that they're going to prove something, that they're going to become assistant manager or whatever. Think about really how open your opportunities are in that kind of place. Think realistically about the possible outcomes of this situation. How likely is it that you are to actually prove to somebody that you're worth more money? My grandmas, for example, the other day were talking about like their work and how they're unfairly compensated or how my grandma does a crap ton of work and somebody else gets a bonus for it and how uncool that is. She's been working at her company for five years, busting out. She talks so proudly about how she works. I know she's a good worker. I've seen her store and it's amazing. She's one of the best in her position in the district and still she's not fairly compensated and somebody else is getting her bonuses for all the work she's doing. There are some places where opportunity just isn't there no matter how much you ask for it. And if you ask and the answer is no, you go look for someone, you go look for something else. Work smarter, not harder. Be willing to be willing to put in the extra mental effort to get to somewhere where you're making more money instead of just putting in a whole bunch of physical effort to get nowhere. Lesson 16, there will always be a struggle. Choose yours and learn to love it. Life is a series of struggles. 
whether you are doing your taxes, whether you are working out to get fit, lose weight, whether you are trying to fix your acne or you're trying to make more money, there's always going to be something to struggle for. Once you overcome those things, there's going to be more struggles. Okay, now my acne is better, but I still don't have the confidence to go ask some guy out. Okay, you, you get the guy and then you get married, whatever, and then you're fighting in your marriage and you're trying to figure that out. There's always going to be something to struggle for, no matter what, no matter where you are in life, no matter what you're doing. You just have to decide what matters enough to you to struggle for. Tons of people spend years in school studying they, something they don't care about just because it's said to make a bunch of money. Then later in life, they come to realize that they wasted a whole bunch of time because they might be making a crap ton of money as a lawyer or as a doctor, but they don't like it. They're not happy where they are. They spent all this time and money in school just to go somewhere and be like, wow, this still wasn't worth it because I'm making a bunch of money, but I'm spending most of my life doing something I don't care about. There are tons of people that drop out of really high positions to start their own business because the money just isn't worth it. It's not making them happy. Life is about the things that you do. And so you have to decide that the things you do are worth your time. Life is a game. So make it fun and happy. And games are fun, but you struggle. You struggle to fight the boss. You struggle to get to the next level. You struggle to solve a puzzle. But you're struggling in a way that you enjoy, in a way that challenges your mind and shapes your personality or your character's personality. If you like to write, write. It's going to be hard. You're going to have to have discipline to sit down and do it every day. But if you do it, you're going to reap so many more rewards once you publish that book and money comes flying in and, oh my God, I have another idea. And you keep writing and you're going to go through it again, but you're going to continue to create things that are going to make you happier and are going to contribute more to who you are and to what you know and what you care about in life. If you're a doctor and you make $100,000 a year, but you're miserable, where's what's where's the point in that? Yeah, you make a bunch of money, but you spend 50 hours a week in a hospital that you don't really care about. I'm not, and I'm not trying to down on doctors. There's some people who do like to be doctors. There's some people that do like to be lawyers or there's some people that never would want to be a writer that would never want to pursue that kind of career and it go it goes all the way around everybody's different and you have to decide what you want to struggle for what you want to put in the effort to become and do in your life lesson 17 it's not about how many people are in your life it's about who those people are people are going to come and go friends are going to come and go high school's going to show you that in high school i had like three groups of friends and at my going away party when i first moved to texas there were like 20 people there not kidding now, I talk to three of those friends on a regular basis and maybe like eight, but over the course of a couple months and then peeping in to say hello. I might only have like two close friends that live around me right now, but they're two friends that raise my energy and make me feel like a better person. And people that trust me and care enough about my opinion to contribute to their lives to make them a better person. And yeah, I could be talking to more people. I've met people at work. I've met people in other places. But if you can tell from the jump that somebody just isn't meant to be in your life or that they just don't really care enough about you to put in the effort to be around you, or if there's somebody with just a really, really low negative energy that is gonna affect you and make you miserable, there's no reason to hang around those people because they're gonna drain your energy more than they're gonna contribute to it. Superficial friendships might be great for a little while and might have some great stories and good laughs, but overall they're not going to do they're not gonna do much to make you that better person that you're meant to be. Lesson 18, when it comes down to it, you will survive. You decide whether or not you thrive. You're probably getting sick of hearing me say the sentence, I've lived out of my car, but I've lived out of my car. <laughs> I, it's a place where when I was in high school, I never would have expected to end up, um, even for a short period of time. Um, it's a place where most people always think, oh, that happens to somebody else, but never to me. And, and it was awful. It was horrible. There were a lot of things about it that really negatively affect me. There were a lot of things about it that really negatively affected me that made it not even worth it to stay in the Bay Area. It affected my friendships with the people that were around me. It affected my relationship with myself because I wasn't taking care of myself. One thing I learned that I will take with me to the rest of my life is I've hit rock bottom. I've hit rock bottom. I know what it looks like. I know what it feels like. And I know that when it comes down to it, you can, shit can hit the fan and it can just explode. It could set your house on fire and you could be on the street. You will survive. 
but no matter what happens, you will survive. Point blank. Unless you're in the wrong place at the wrong time and you have really bad luck and you're really not careful and it's like some crazy thing that happens to you, you will survive. You get to decide whether or not you're going to thrive. You get to decide whether you are going to let your rock bottom be your new regular. I took those circumstances. I said, screw it. And now I'm living in a home. For a while, you have to be selfish. You have to focus on yourself. When it comes to survival at the rock bottom, you focus on yourself. You need to do what you got to do to get up off the ground and to be that. And to get yourself to a better place in your life. You have to decide to do that. You're going to survive whether you're going to live on rock bottom or you're going to get better. But you have to decide and you have to make conscious, continual effort to get to a better place, to be a better person, to, to have a home, to have good relationships, to love who you are, to enhance your physical health, to enhance your mental health, to care for yourself. You decide. I'll say it one more time. I promise you that you will survive through almost any hardship you'll go through in life. You just get to decide whether you're going to, you just get to decide whether you're going to float or you're going to bounce back full force and become better you than the you that went into that situation in the first place. Lesson 19, relationships are built. They are a lot of work, but with the right person, they're worth it. I've been with my boyfriend, Benjamin, for two and a half years and a year of that relationship combined, about six months and then six months, has been long distance. And let me tell you that it has sucked so bad a lot of it <laughs> in the beginning relationships are glamorous and they're wonderful and they're all and they're all butterflies and warm feelings and roses and presents and dates once you get past that phase and you realize that this is not an angel this is another human being that you have come to love that is when shit gets real and that is when you decide whether whether you are going to put in the work to keep this person around or you are going to hit the trails and just start hooking up with random people in the bars. We've broken up a few times. We have taken space a few times. We have come back together so many times after splitting apart. But all the reasons that we ever left or we ever took space was to better ourselves and our relationship. It was always so that we could reconfigure and take the next step. We take breaks, we come back. Over the past couple months, we've stabilized and learned to just work through it and stop saying, okay, I'm leaving you because it's just not going to actually happen. Things happen, we have to go through them together. That's a relationship. If you're scared, sometimes the feelings aren't going to be there. Sometimes you're going to feel like, oh my god, I'm not in love with them anymore. What does that mean? That means you sit down and you talk about it. That means you sit down and you talk about it and figure out what's going on. Is it because you haven't spent enough time together lately? Is it because the spark's not there anymore and because you just don't care about each other? Is it because there's somebody else? Is it because you have this feeling that he's cheating and you have to confront him and figure out if he is? Is it because you're across the freaking country and he's doing fi his finals thing for school and you've got to be supportive. You've got to be respectful of the fact that he needs space. But you also have to talk when the spark feels like it's fading. It's a lot. Relationships, they're fucking hard, okay? They require a lot of work. They require a lot of dedication. They require a lot of communication. Communication. Let me say that again. Please communicate with each other. I beg of you, please communicate with each other because you will save yourself of so much hardship and so many unanswered questions if you just say what you feel. Please, Benjamin, I'm talking to you. I know I went on an actually pretty long rant about this one, but this one's so important and I will make another video about it, but please tell me know if you actually want that, which is lesson 20, gratitude makes life worth it. If you're not grateful for where you are in life, you're never going to feel like you're in a better place. No matter how much more money you're making, no matter how superficially happy you are, no matter how many friends you have around you, if you don't take the time to feel grateful. If you don't get out of your own head, stop being so self-righteous, so selfish, so ask me, ask me, asking and never saying thank you or appreciating where you are. If I moved here and was focusing just simply on the fact that I am so far away from everything I know, that this is also new to me, that it's fucking hot and it's Texas and, and it's different and it's new and it's a lot and it's scary. If I was focusing on all of those things, I wouldn't have time to appreciate the fact that I moved here and I have this room 
I have a bed to sleep in. I have my adorable sleeping dog who's just laying right there. I have a air conditioning in here, even though it's hot. I have, I have my family around. I have food to eat. I have so, so much to be grateful for. I went through hell to get here. And I'm still going through hell in other ways. I'm always going to be walking through some sort of hell. So are you. But if you take the time to appreciate what you do have, and to really say thank you, it'll make everything that is soon to come and everything that you're going through now that much better and more enjoyable. You don't have to have the world. You don't have to, you don't have to have a walk-in closet full of things. You don't have to drive a brand new car. Sure as hell I don't. <laughs> All you have to do is say thank you for what you have now. And then life will want to give you more things. And it's okay if they don't. You have to decide it's okay where you are now. No matter how bad of a place you're in. That's what got me through when I lived in my car. Was being grateful for having my boyfriend around. And for having my friends. And for having my family who offered to take me in when I had to get out of there for my mental sake. Just be grateful. If anything you take away from this, be grateful. And don't hesitate. Do take action in life because you regret the things you don't do. I know you've heard that a million times, but I have to emphasize that you will regret the things that you don't do in life. You will never regret things that you do, even if they turn out badly, because you learn, you move on, and you become a better person and you are introduced to a better situation. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know how you felt about it. If you liked talking to me on this level, I know this one's a longer one, but I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, your week, your month. Please hit subscribe if you like my vibe, if you want to watch more videos that are like this, not quite this long, uh, if you wanna watch more videos in general um, that I, the things I talk about, but other than that. Thanks. Look, if you leave work an hour lurry, an hour lurry. Look, if you leave work an hour lurry, early, lurry, why do I keep saying lurry? <laughs>